Hi everyone, today is the day. We're going to build a silent PC from scratch. Uh, I've purchased 75 to 100 PCs, so I know how to buy it, I know how to detail the parts, but I've actually never built one on my own. I believe in myself, it'll happen today. So in the previous video, uh, we talked about all the components that would go into this build. And one of them was a rack mount case. And so we bought the case, decided on the, using the Noctua NH-D15 award-winning CPU cooler. When the product arrived, uh, it turned out that even that was too big. What we did instead, we purchased the Noctua NH-U9S. And the thing about this product it's 100% compatible. That means we'll always be able to access our RAM cards. It will also mean that we'll be able to access the PCIe expansion cards. We went out and bought the black version. So this is the Chromax Black. This is the one we're using for my son's gaming machine. It's so quiet now I can actually hear myself think. Okay, you ready? Let's get started. When we're working with a case, you want to get the biggest case you can. And when I say big, I don't mean tall. I mean fat. And the reason for that is you want the largest CPU fan that you can possibly fit into your box. There's a wonderful company called BigAssFans.com. Uh, they're worth checking out. They've got fans up to 24 feet wide. And, and if you walk around in Costco or in Home Depot, look up. You'll see fans that big. And the reason you want your fans so big, not 24 feet, but you want them big because they're more efficient. They will move more air with each rotation than a tiny fan running around very quickly. We're just taking the lid off here. And as you look inside, you'll see that this is our case the way it is today. There's a few steps that I'm not able to show you. Unfortunately, I'm sorry about that. Let's review what steps have already been done. Take your motherboard out of the box. Don't put it in the case. Put it on top of the box. And that's going to be your little workbench. Once you're on this little workbench, you want to do as many steps as you can before taking out the central processor. You don't want to risk having any issues with it. What you want to do is first, insert your RAM. The second was to install the NVMe card. We're using half a terabyte or 500 gigabytes. And so this SSD is going to be used for our operating system and for our digital audio workstation software. So that's right in this area. And it actually has its own heat sink, which I think is pretty cool. And it's got a plate. And the only reason I'm not showing it is it's got a, some kind of sticker as well to hold it down. So I'm not going to mess with that. When you're dealing with your CPU cooler, some models will have mounting brackets on the bottom of the motherboard. So this is a great opportunity. Just flip it over, install the mounting brackets, flip it back over, and screw in the connectors. Now that the mounting arms are set up, we are ready to install the CPU. You'll lift up the arm, insert the, the CPU, lock it in place, and then you'll put the CPU cooler on top. When you're putting in the CPU cooler on top of the CPU on its surface, you will apply thermal paste. Okay, I was very, <laughs> I was scared because I didn't want to screw it up. I thought, I, you know, I was like, oh no, I'm going to put too much and it's going to slip and slide or I'm going to put too little and it won't, ha won't have a good adhesion. Uh, so I watched so many videos on it. It's not that big a deal. About half a pea, about a green pea, you just squirt it on there. As the two surfaces come together, it will flatten out and it just allows for the uh, 
the heat of the CPU to transfer to the cooler so that it can dissipate the heat. It's not that hard, you got it. Now that it's in place, we're gonna screw it down so it's really rock solid. Uh, I made one mistake here and you see the, the, the case wires that connect to the motherboard. It was so hard to, to get my fat fingers into the, to the header that was right next to the case. So connect anything you possibly can ahead of time and then put it into your case. These mounting screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's four, <laughs> seven, eight, nine. So there's nine of them, make sure you get them all so it's very sturdy. If you're dealing with a desktop case, you're, what you'll have is a fan at the front of your case that's near the bottom. And it's gonna push air into the case, fresh air. The air will heat up and it will rise. And then you'll have a, a case fan at the top of the case and it's gonna blow it out the back. Simple, right? It's all physics. Each board will have multiple headers, and headers are these little adapters that allow components to connect to the motherboard with a wire. Here we've got a bunch, some for fans, some for disk drives, some for Thunderbolt cards, some for the power supply. There are also thermal sensors, different ones in different areas of the board. That'll be very interesting, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, we're gonna install our CPU cooler fans. With our cooler came the NF-A9. So that this is a quiet fan. It's got four pin support, PWM. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so there's pushing fans and there's pulling fans. And so this one is a pulling fan. It's gonna pull the heat from the CPU and it's gonna send that hot air out the back of the case. By the way, if you found this video helpful, please click the like button. Thank you very much. All right, you'll see here that uh, this, the cooler is 95 millimeters by 95 millimeters, and that means it has perfect clearance to access the RAM. Now, we can put an optional fan, and we will, uh, that will be a pushing fan to the CPU cooler. And we'll do that in a future video. And it will have clearance issues, so we'll raise it up a little, but it's easily uh, easy to take it off if, if we need to. All right, obviously, we need to connect the fan to the header so it has power. And so there's a header here labeled CPU fan. And so obviously that's what we plug it into. Later on, we'll see that our power will actually feed uh, all, all of the, the juice into the motherboard and it, all the peripherals will work from that power. Okay, I flipped around the uh, case so we can look at the back. Once we put the motherboard into the case, it's going to show all the connections at the back here. So this is USB 3.1. We got Ethernet. We've got four other USB 3.1 and they're colored in teal. We've got HDMI, display port. This is 3.1 USB. We've also got two USB 2.0. They're the black ones and a PS2 connector, which you probably won't need. Here we are setting up the power supply. This particular case has a mount. So it comes with the case. We're gonna unscrew that and we will mount the PSU to the mounting frame. And then together, all of that will get screwed into the case. Okay, we're gonna speed this up a bit.
Okay, so now that the, the PSU is connected to the mount, we'll put all the pieces together and we'll screw it into the case. Now we're going to install the cables. We only need two. In your situation, based on your motherboard and what peripherals you have, you may have more than two wires needed. So I connected the two to the main board or the motherboard first, and now I'm just sticking those two into the back of the power supply. We're going to move on now to install our graphics card. I'm in Toronto, and if I had my choice, I would have purchased the Palit COMX. This is an NVIDIA GeForce 1050 Ti, and Ti, I believe, is titanium. That's what I would have purchased. It's 4K ready. It has 4 gigabytes. We've also got a great graphics card here in the T GT 1030 by MSI. It has 2 gigabytes. The really nice thing about both of these is that we don't have a big need for super high graphics when we're dealing with music production. You'll see here that there are no fans on either of these cards. It uses a heat sink uh, method for dealing with heat distribution. Now when, when you're seeding any card into your motherboard, you want to be, uh, you want to apply enough pressure that, you see that little that little stick at the end here, you'll push that down and as you seat the card into place, the stick will pop up. So be listening, you'll hear a click. And obviously, if you, you know, if you don't, if your graphics card isn't working or your memory isn't recognized, then obviously you haven't seated it properly. So just take it out and redo it and you, you should be listening for a click. You hear the click? It's a good thing. Good job. Okay, so we finish our basic install and we're ready to do a test, our first test. And the reason we do a basic install rather than trying to put everything into the machine is we want to gradually verify that all the components, especially the motherboard, is going to work out fine. So, cross your fingers. What we're going to do I've already hooked up the power supply and I've uh, connected the machine to this monitor. Okay, so let's turn on the power supply first. Okay, so we're going to do a test now. We're going to try, try to make this work. So here we go. Okay, so I'm listening for a ding or multiple dings, which is the system telling us that there's an issue. So I see immediately the power supply is rotating, the, fi the fan is rotating. I can hear this fan uh, at the front, the chassis fan going, it's pretty loud. Oh, the BIOS has, has booted up, so that's an amazing sign. Uh, it's alive! Uh, and uh, let me check the last fan. And this this not to a silent fan is also working for the CPU. So that that's fantastic. I didn't expect it to uh, work flawlessly, uh, but we'll continue to do the testing here. Okay, so let's zoom in. We'll take a look at the BIOS, which is really the firmware that comes with your motherboard. Okay, we've zoomed in to the BIOS utility application. So this main board, we're using ASUS, but if it was Gigabyte or MSI or some other manufacturer, it's going to have some similar BIOS utility to look and inspect uh, the peripherals before you've installed your operating system. Okay, so we look here at something really cool. It's called the Fan Profile. And we see we've got a CPU fan, uh, and it's spinning around and around. It's over 600 RPMs, so that's how fast it's rotating. And as the computer heats up in different regions of the main board or motherboard, it will 
make those fans go even faster. Uh, you'll see here CHA2. This is the big fan that came with the case. We will be replacing it because it's way too loud. It's, o it's running over 900 RPMs. So we'll remember that number because when we uh, swap it out, I want to see what those numbers are later. You'll see here, see that it says CPU OPT fan? That's the optional fan. So that'll be our pushing fan that we haven't installed yet. And the one called CPU fan, that's our pulling fan that pulls heat away from the CPU and out of the back of the case. There are other fans like the M.2, we could have a fan for that. Uh, the chassis one fan will install for the back of the case. You see over here, this is the temperature for the CPU, for the region of the main board. And it also has a separate temperature uh, sensor and it's clocked it at 27 degrees. And the CPU temperature, it's showing you over time that, you know, it's gradually sloping up, but not considerably. We're not taxing the CPU or the motherboard at the moment. We'll get to that. We're gonna ramp it up and it will uh, work even harder. In this build, we are only using PWM fans. And that means, uh, like a fan normally has three pins on it when you plug it into the motherboard. It has an optional fourth pin and that's what we're using. The fourth pin allows the smart firmware to understand based on sensors that are located in different regions of the motherboard, how hot that region is. And if it is very hot or very cool, it will determine how fast a fan needs to go, or perhaps it will shut down a fan altogether. If you shut down a fan, it's gonna have less noise. Okay, hold on, don't move a muscle. I think we've done a good job but this is the basic install. Come back. We're going to do enhancements to this silent PC. We're going to take the case fan, uh, the one at the very front. It's a big one. It's 120 millimeters. We're going to rip that out and replace it with the silent fan. We're also going to add a couple more fans to inside the case. We'll be installing some solid state drives to handle music libraries. We're also going to adapt the machine to have a Thunderbolt interface. So come back soon and I'll talk to you then.